Good morning, Claire. Um, I'm really happy to have you here today as part of our Mums at Work event to hear your best top tips on how to prepare and deliver presentations. Okay, thank you, Sinead. Yes, um, presentations, when you um, hear somebody saying, oh, I've got to do a presentation, you don't normally hear there's glee in their voice. You normally hear, oh, no, I've got to do a presentation. So what I'm going to do is share with you um, some top tips to take out that pain, okay, because it's really not a good starting point when you go, oh, no, I've got to do a presentation. So these top tips um, are in three groups, okay? And the three groups I'm going to cover are preparation, the power of three, and practice. So I'm going to cover preparation for presentations, what you need to do, the power of three, and there's a, a model and a tool technique I'm going to share with you, which is fantastic. I wish I'd known it years ago. And then the practice piece. Um, so presentations, people are normally feel really, really worried and concerned. And um, what I would say to you is, as part of your preparation, think about how long your presentation is going to be. And if it's going to be 10 minutes, allow an hour of preparation for every minute that you're going to present. Now, people have got, oh, no, surely not. But you definitely need that is the equation. It's an hour for every minute for your presentation. So when and part of your presentation, part of this, um, part of this preparation piece is think about your purpose. Why am I doing this? Now I'm talking about presentations, but actually this is communication. If you have got a key communication piece to do with somebody, even if it's your 60 seconds or it's a um, conversation that you want to have with somebody to influence or to negotiate, Preparation is absolutely key. And part of that preparation, think about why am I doing this? Where does this fit in? Where does this fit in with the big picture? Stephen Covey, um, Seven Habits of Effective People, talks about begin with the end in mind. So it's like, um, why am I doing this? How does this fit in with my goals? Either the personal goals, business goals, career goals. So therefore, you're not just focusing in on that piece of communication you've got to do. You're actually looking at a bigger picture and realizing, OK, I'm doing this. But actually, the reason I'm doing this is I'm going to raise my profile. I'm going to be able to demonstrate I've got skills, knowledge and experience. I'm going to build my confidence and it's going to take me where I want to go. So think about your purpose, think about why am I doing this and how it fits in with your goals. The second piece of your preparation is right, okay, what are my key messages? What do I want to get across? What are the key messages? Communication's two way, you have to be heard and understood. So when you're doing your presentation, it's actually not about you, it's about the other person. And it's about your audience, the other person, the people you're talking to, for them to hear and understand what you're saying. And you then need to think, well, what am I saying? What is the message? And we all know that person who starts and they talk and they talk and they talk and they talk. And you think, what on earth is the point of this? Where is this going? And actually the person hasn't thought, it's just verbal diarrhea, if you pardon the expression. So think about your key messages. And I would say, you know, again, we're talking about this presentation, but even if you're in a meeting with people and speaking, maybe you're not terribly comfortable with speaking, but you do want to get a point across, Take a step back and think, OK, well, what, what are the key messages I want I want to get across? And again, use some of the techniques I'm going to share with you about how best then to get that message across. So key messages. The third thing under preparation then is your audience. Think about your audience. What's in it for them? Because I hate to tell you, that's what they're going to be thinking about. What's in this for me? OK, why should I listen? Why should I spend time listening to this? And they will be scanning and they'll be listening. What am I going to get out of this? And I know it sounds very selfish, but it is a human nature piece. And um, so think about your audience. What's in it for them? And I'm doing some work with um, a company at the minute and doing coaching with a, a manager. And she's saying they never listen to me. They never listen to me. So it's a construction company and obviously have to wear um, hard hats, protective gear, um, shoes need to be steel, steel cap shoes. And they never listen. They never listen. And I said, well, how are you communicating? Well, I tell them, I tell them they have to do this. I said, well, what's in it for them? Are you communicating to tap into them? So how could you then communicate with them so that they then get the message and then do the action that you want them to do? 
So after a bit of discussion, I said, what are the consequences if they don't wear their, um, their protective shoes and boots? Oh, well, the toes will get crushed. All right, okay. So if you actually said to them, if you don't want your toes to get crushed potentially on the building site, what do you think you should be doing? Oh, I should be wearing my boots. And if you think about it, the, the, um, the vaccination message now is very much, if you want to go abroad, get the vaccination. If you want to minimize your chance of being in hospital, minimize your chance of getting long COVID, get your vaccination. So it's what's in it for you and it's appeal to that person. So know your audience and know what they're interested in and what their hopes are going to be. So the second piece then, the second P is the power of three. And research shows that the brain is very good at just remembering three things. It doesn't take much effort to remember three things. So my three Ps, preparation, power of three and practice. So I know exactly what I'm going to do. So that's helped me signpost what I'm going to do and where I'm going to go. And the power of three, and if you think about the advertising, you know, Nike, just do it, Mars, work, rest and play. If you look around now, a lot of the advertising agencies, it's the power of three. Um, grab a jab is the expression that's been used, three, three words. When we were at school, you had a beginning, a middle and an end. So the power of three. So you've taken time to think about your audience. You've thought about your key message. You know why you're doing it. So therefore your brain is still, oh, there's all this stuff that I want to get across. So the process and model for this is to get a blank piece of paper and just anything and everything that comes to mind about that topic, about that message that you want to give, anything and everything, just throw it all down. Part of our brains, there's part of our brains that are the creative side and have lots of information and um, our memory and and part of our brain, the left side, is the logical side and structure side. Now, you want to quieten your structure logical side. You want to quieten that down and you want to tap into your creative side because you want to be creative to get um, your audience interested so they will listen, they will understand and maybe even enjoy it. You might enjoy it too. So throw it all down, OK, because the brain can't cope with, with both at once, logic and ideas. So throw it all down. Then once you've done that brain dump effectively, look to say, OK, what are the three key themes that are coming out here? And people go, oh no, but there's loads I want to say, but hold on, it's not about you, it's about your audience. So the audience can hear and understand what you're saying. And look at three key themes, okay? So you'll then look at the three key themes, and then with all the words you've, you've had in your ideal, the ideas you've had put down, you will find that the majority of those will probably fit under those three key themes. So if we were to take summer holidays, there'd be all sorts of words you'd associate with summer. There'd be beach, there would be um, vaccinations <laughs> and certificates. There would, be, um, there would be budget, there would be you know, expense, there would be eating, there'd be drinking with family and friends. But actually you could then quite easily do a presentation on holidays, three key themes. So the first thing could be, what are your requirements for a holiday? What do you enjoy for a holiday? The second could be, um, what do you actually want to do, your plan, and does that fit in so your plan, budgeting? And then the third is around the people and the enjoyment. And then you'll be able to go, okay, I'm gonna tell you about my requirements. I'm gonna tell you about the plans I need to put in place and the budget to meet those requirements. And then I'm gonna tell you about the people I'm gonna go on holiday with. So you can do it. And again, when it comes to your business, even your, your two minute intro, your elevator pitch, your one minute introduction, you could actually do that. So when I get a phone call from a client, um, I do a lot of um, interview coaching. So I will ask them questions to get to know my audience, where they are benchmarking. I will then explain to them uh, just a bit of my background from a credibility point of view, I know what I'm talking about. Then I will um, take them through the process. So this is what you expect. You know, this is what I will be doing and therefore the benefits. So there's that three stage step that they then know, they know that I have a bit of credibility. They know the process they're gonna go through. Plus then they know the benefits of having gone through the process, how it's gonna help them deliver a good, strong interview performance. So the power of three, so you'll say your topic, you will let them know, you'll signpost the three key things. You'll 
say your three key themes and your points, ideally three points under each, and lead them. So once you finish the first one, then lead them into the next one. I'm now going to move into the second one. I'm now going to move into the third one. And then when you've finished, you'll tell them, okay, I was sharing with you information about my holiday. The three key themes were A, B, and C. And then you have your call to action. You have, what are you leaving them with? It's really important to plan a holiday. So you have plenty of time to do the things you enjoy with the people that you love. Bang, and that's it. So that's the power of three, and that's a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant tool and template. I, I was phoned about three or four years ago, a phone by Radio Ulster, and they said, look, um, we want to talk to a life coach about happiness. Oh, all right then. Um, would you be able to take a call in an hour's time? So I literally pulled the car up, I did a brain dump, I did my mind map, got my three, and bang, within an hour, I was then able and ready to, to do that telephone interview. Very, very powerful, very, very effective. So now I'm going to move into my third theme, which is practice. And again, this is people feel quite reluctant to do this because it's a wee bit like holding your feet at the fire. And again, this is what I do with clients. I'll get them to practice, get them to practice their interviews or if they're coming for um, presentation coaching, get them to practice and practice and practice because you do not want, when you're doing your presentation or you're doing your pitch, you do not want it to be the first time your mouth and brain are getting engaged because your mouth needs time to catch up with your brain, okay? And what you need to do, it's a bit like um, build, building muscle when you're exercising. You need to build that muscle because you're, you're creating neurons by having ideas and thoughts. And whenever you start to practice and practice, the mouth and the brain then get more coordinated. You know yourself, maybe you're saying something and say, oh no, that word doesn't sound right. You'll have a little gremlin going, oh no, that word's not quite right. And you'll be, oh, what word is right? You don't want to be having that conversation with your gremlin whenever you're going through your pitch or your presentation. You want to get that all sorted out, those gremlins all put to bed before you do. So even for this, I had a walk this morning and I was practicing this um, on my walk this morning. And I'm sure the farmers thought it was a bit mad, but there you go. Um, but you need to practice because you need your mouth and brain to be engaged. Therefore, you need to, you're then more comfortable with it. You're starting to build up that in your, um, you're on that pathway so that it's not completely new and you're starting to get um, uh, just basically more confident, confident as well. If you're more comfortable, you're more confident and you've squashed the gremlins. In practice as well, then, whenever you are doing it, um, you can then work out your pace. Um, and I would encourage people, and if it's really, really important to you, record yourself. Either record yourself the, the words so you can hear or record yourself with video as well and play it back. And what you'll find is, and a lot of clients, when I do it for them, they'll go, oh gosh, I'm not as bad as I thought I was. And we're not, it's our, it's our inner voice, it's our gremlins that are our inner critics. So if you listen then back, you can then listen, you can see what the pace is, you can see what the tone is. So if you're talking like this and it's all very boring, are the audience going to be interested in that? No, they're not. So therefore, work and play with that intonation as well so that it's interesting for them. Plus, it's a wee bit more interesting for you as well. You can, you can put a bit more gusto into it. Um, the other thing too then is, again, pace and pitch and tone. And when you're now then getting a lot more comfortable with this, the most important thing to do, and this is going to sound completely daft, is to breathe. Okay, so when you're practicing, practice breathing before you do your presentation. Practice talking slowly. Practice speeding it up a bit. Practice pausing. You think it's a long time, but actually the audience probably want to pause because they want, oh yeah, that's a good point. I want to think about that. But your breathing is so important. And the breathing it ties in then to, you know, the posture, the shoulders back, head up, so that you're getting... Um, you're getting oxygen into your system and therefore you're diluting the adrenaline so your brain is functioning and actually you, do, you don't want to be you don't want to be talking from here you want to be talking from from your stomach so that practice there's a lot of stuff in there so you can actually see when i said about 10 hours prep for a minute you can actually see the the, the amount of time and the amount of effort that does actually need to go in so in conclusion to get the right mindset, I would really encourage you to do your preparation, know your audience, your purpose, key messages. Use the power of three so that you've got that structure so it's easy for you and it's easier for your audience to understand. Practice 
so you're getting familiar with the words, you're, you're, you're playing with it nearly, and um, you're building up your confidence, and therefore you can do a presentation to the best of your ability because you have actually put a lot of effort and preparation in it. And your re inner voice can say, well, I've done my prep, I am prepared, I'm going to take a deep breath and I'm going to go for it. And I would encourage you all within the next, to set yourself a date to do, practice your one minute pitch and record it and play it back. Thank you.